So give me the faith to finish the race. Look it up, got my eyes on you. I'll follow your lead, whatever it takes. Give it up, give it all for you. I won't worry about tomorrow. Cause I know that you know where I'm going. Well, hello, and welcome to another installment of Wednesday's Word. This will be our last on the theme of Thanksgiving based on Psalm 103. So if you would please turn in your Bibles to Psalm 103 and we will go from there. Now, what we'll do today is we'll read from verses 15 through 22 and deal with what I'm calling the chorus of Thanksgiving. The chorus of Thanksgiving. And notice what we find here in verse 15. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. When the wind has passed over it, it is no more, and its place acknowledges it no longer. But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts to do them. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his sovereignty rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength who perform his word obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you who serve him doing his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Well, here's the chorus of thanksgiving. God calls us in Psalm 103 to thank him, to bless the Lord, and to do so from our soul. Well, who is he talking to? in this passage. Well, notice, first of all, in verse 19, it says that the Lord has established his throne in the heavens, in the heavens, and his sovereignty rules over all. There is not a single being in the universe who is not under the sovereign care and authority of God. And so all of us should thank him and be grateful to him for the simple fact that he allows us to exist. In fact, What sets apart holy angels from fallen angels is simply this. Holy angels love God and praise God for what he is. And fallen angels or demons curse God because they refuse to thank him for what he is. So notice in verse 20, it says this, Bless the Lord, you his angels. God calls the beings that exist, real beings called angels, He calls them to bless him, to talk about how great he is. It makes me think of Isaiah chapter 6, where the angels are flying around the presence of God and they're shouting, holy, 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 because God is so wonderful. Even angelic beings, especially angelic beings, are called to bless the Lord. That is to celebrate his greatness, to thank him for who he is. In verse 21, it says this, Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you who serve him doing his will. Now, I looked this up. What does this mean when it says you're the hosts? Well, what this refers to is the sun and the moon and the stars. And what Psalm 103 tells us is that even these things should be resounding in praise to God. Again, this is poetry, right? So it's not to be taken literally. We don't expect the sun to speak or the moon to speak. But their functions, their existence, exist to thank God, to display God's greatness. And then 22, we find this, Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. This means every being and every creature that is under the sovereignty of God is called to thank him, to bless him. Now, remember, That's everybody. The only being who is not under God is God himself, right? So when he says all creatures, when he says all works of his, that's everybody, everything. And then finally, at the end of verse 22, he gets personal again. Because it's easy to say the angels should praise God for his goodness. And it's easy to say, oh, the sun and the moon and the stars should shine for his goodness. And it's easy to say all creatures should thank him for what God is and what God does. But he doesn't end there. He ends in verse 22 by saying this, 
bless the Lord, O my soul. He reminds us that we are called to thank God. So let me encourage you this Thanksgiving season that that you take some time to think about who God is, what he's done for you, what he's doing for you, and spend some time simply thanking him. Now, one thing to remember is that in Romans, it says that the difference between us and the world is that we acknowledge God to be God and we give thanks. So let me encourage you to spend some time thinking about this God, thanking him for who he is. Let's pray.